Hi, welcome to my class part two. There was a little more I wanted to show you about the classroom um, that I wasn't able to fit on the last video. We kind of have a, min a limit of five minutes of recording time. So I wanted to show you the other side of the classroom, which is the side your students will see the majority of the time they're here. Um, the desks, as you can see, are spaced out. And I'm not sure if you can see it because it's clear. But our principal and bookkeeper were kind enough to purchase us a plexiglass shield for um, our where we teach from. So um, that is also there as another protection measure since I will be facing your children as I'm teaching. Um, I was beginning to talk about it earlier, but I have received a lot of donations for class items from an organization called Donors Choose, where people can donate towards certain projects. My goal for this year was to not need any supplies from parents. Um, and for the most part, I can do that. However, when I made the project, I thought I was going to be teaching two classes, and now I'm teaching four. So. Um, there are a couple of things that I will need. Um, your child should always have notebook paper with them no matter what. They'll need it for all their classes. And the same for here. They will need notebook paper. Um, I do have, I'm going to turn it around, 30 boxes of Kleenex that was included in a project. I have your yellow language arts folder, so you won't need to purchase that. I was able to get as well... Let me see if I can hold the computer. Um, I have extra lanyards if your child happens to leave theirs or break theirs. These are ID badge holders. So um, if your child's ID snaps, we can put it in there. I have extra dry erase markers. I have a lot of extra pencils and I've already put one in every child's container. And I have some highlighters. The highlighters are the thing I will probably need more of. I have 36 of each color and I have approximately 60 students. So for my goal to give every student their own set of markers or highlighters, um, I will need more to do that. We use highlighters when we're writing essays. That's a way of teaching them to make sure they have all the ingredients of their essays. Um, when they're writing. Um, and that is about it. Um, I did record a video with um, a Google map for those of you whose children do not know how to get to my classroom already. So I just kind of want to walk out the door so you can see what it looks like as they're walking up rather than just from um, an image from above the school. So hopefully this is not going to be too bright. When you walk out, if you can see, that is the long sidewalk that I said your children will need to walk down. And if you'll notice my door, there's a cement sidewalk all the way up to it. If your child takes the wooden sidewalk, they will go to the wrong portable. So it's pretty easy to find. They'll learn how to get here within a day. So um, if you have any questions, my Google Voice number is going to be the easiest way to get in touch with me. My Google Voice number is area code 941-479-0818. I do want students to have that number. Um, I do want to get students' numbers because that makes it easier um, to text back and forth with them if you are at work and if we um, do end up having to go into a distance learning situation. Um, it makes it easier to stay in touch. Um, your child might notice I will have my cell phone up front while I'm teaching more often this year because I do have students on the hybrid model or a distance model that might be communicating with a question for me. So I'm not shopping for a sofa on Wayfair or anything. Um, it's just to communicate with children and their parents. Um, I would like you as well, if you could text me, with um, your child's name so I can have your information in my contacts too so I can call or text you um, much easier and if there's any concerns um, that would be wonderful so anyways again if you have any questions um, you can either email me or um, call me at my google voice number thanks bye